Am I back now? Did you lose audio and video or any of it? All right, I apologize. I guess Nashville, Indiana has a strong connection as we thought. So, all right. So what we were talking about before we were so rudely interrupted was the secondary buyers. There are three major ones that work uh, under the government realm. And to get, together collectively, you hear these called GSE for government service enterprises. All right. These are the three big secondary buyers. FHA, I mean, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Jenny Mae, all right? Those are our three big buyers. They probably buy 80 to 90% of all the loans there are. On page 237 is a little chart to help you understand. Fannie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association, is now all three of these are under what they call conservatorship. Basically, they're owned by the government, okay? And Fannie Mae loves to deal with conventional and FHA insured and the VA loans. That's what they buy. And they will set standards to the primary market as to, hey, we only buy you know, 700 credit scores, 80% loan to value, whatever, that's the pool that they would put together and sell to them. The second buyer is Freddie Mac, all right? Freddie Mac deals mainly in conventional loans, so they love that 80% uh, percent loan to value with a good borrower and all of that. Then the third person that we're gonna talk about is Jenny May. Jenny May is typically not a buyer. They are more like a insurance group for the others. And then there's a fourth one you've probably never heard of called Farmer Mac. Farmer Mac deals in the USDA loans, USDA loans. And we're gonna talk all about these individually here in just a second. So those are the four, well, three technically, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Farmer Mac are the three big repurchasers of the primary market. Now, anybody, there are private people out there and you can do that if you want, but currently those are the three big ones, all right? So let's go over here and uh, look at the board a second, see if we can get this straight now. Um, that's not the right one. That's the one we want. So when dealing with, let me make sure, are you guys seeing the right screen? Yeah. There's a couple things we've already talked about. Remember this term here that we've discussed, loan to value. That loan to value allows the lender to determine if a person is uh, what their worthiness is. And remember this term here, they love this number, 80% loan to value. That means your loan is 80% of the value of the home. And the value, remember, is defined as one of two things. It's either the appraised value or the purchase price whichever is the lower of the two, all right? So now in the lending world, you have this word here, when they get 80% loan to value, they call this a conventional loan, a conventional loan, because that's the number. I don't know where that number came from. I'm sure there's some reason why it's not 85 or 74, but 80% is the magic number for the loan to value to be considered a conventional loan, okay? So remember, if you've got the value here and the loan amount here, the ratio of those two is what we call the loan to value, all right? 
So now in this scenario where there's an 80% loan to value, there's this number right here that we've talked about before, that 20% is called equity. That represents, equity represents the amount of money that is paid off of the loan. Typically on the initial purchase, we would call that a down payment. So if you've got 80% loan to value, that means you're bringing 20% down at the closing table. So on a $100,000, you get an $80,000 loan. You bring $20,000 in the uh, down payment, which is, would be construed as equity. All right. So now here's a question for you. In this 80-20 loan, if the value drops a little, like to here, whose money actually got hit? Whose money is that? Anybody? The banks. Not, not the bank. If that's the if the equity value drops, whose money is this right here? That's yours. So whose money gets hit if I value drops? That's my money, right? Yeah. I still owe eighty thousand, but now the house is worth ninety five. So it was my equity that got hit. Do you think the bank cares about that? No. No, not at all. So let's change the scenario though. Why didn't that all clear? So let's change the scenario. Now, if I've got 100%, loan to value how much equity is in that zero zero very good now let's talk about this the value goes down to here whose money got hit now now cameron's answer is true that is the bank's money because you have no equity in this scenario do you think the bank cares now? Most assuredly they do. Matter of fact, they care so much that when you get a loan above the 80%, they actually force you as the consumer to buy an insurance policy to protect them that is called PMI. This is where private mortgage insurance comes in. This is the whole point behind this, behind it. It is an insurance policy so that if you've got a 100% loan to value, all of a sudden the value drops and you go into foreclosure or whatever, they can go to their insurance company and claim a loss. This is a insurance policy that you pay for that will protect the bank. It's called PMI. Now, I will tell you here lately, they've kind of jerking around with the term conventional. They've got this thing called insured conventional, which still is a what they're calling a conventional loan, but it's at 97%. So they force you to buy insurance on them. So they call it an insured conventional loan, okay? So that's what private mortgage is. It is a policy that protects them. So by definition, the true, in, the true conventional loan is 80% loan to value, no PMI. When someone says, I want a conventional loan, They've got 80% loan to value, no PMI, okay? So now let's talk about the government sponsored enterprises. FHA is the first one I wanna talk about. Here's another one of those misnomers that people talk about all the time. There is no such thing as an FHA loan, all right? 
there's no such thing as a VA loan, a veteran's loan. They are insured by the FHA or guaranteed by the VA. Think of the FHA almost like a cosigner. The bank still makes the loan. FHA just says, hey, Mr. Bank, we think Raymond's a good guy, so go ahead and you loan him the money, and if he goes bad, we'll cover it, all right? So there's really no FHA loan per se. They don't loan money. That's kind of like how the VA works too, to be honest. The VA is the exact same one. Matter of fact, so is the SBA, if you ever get a small business loan. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Farmer Mac. None of these entities loan the money. The bank still owns the money. And you've got to find a bank that is FHA approved because some banks may not be. Same with the VA, same with mm -hmm. the SBA. You've got to get those certain banks that are approved and you can't go to another bank. Um, like Salem Bank is not FHA approved to the best of my knowledge. So if you wanted to get an FHA insured loan, you couldn't go to Salem Bank. That's a small private bank you would have to go to Chase or Fifth Third or one of the bigger banks, all right? The primary advantage to FHA is this. It is a very low down payment. It's only three and a half percent down for the FHA borrower. So that allows them to get a 96 and a half percent loan, all right? So now that, that should have just triggered something in your head. At 96.5% loan to value, is there PMI on it? Yes. So when you get an FHA insured loan, you still have PMI. The banks are allowed to do certain things even though you're getting your loan insured by the government. PMI is one of them. Cameron, go ahead and hit your mute, please. Thank you. Um, so the FHA only insures it, but the bank is still making a 96.5% loan, so they can charge PMI on that loan, okay? Now, here's a, let's go back and look at something on the PMI that I want to make sure that we didn't talk about, and I want to pick it up. <clears throat> See if I can clear this again. I wonder why some of this isn't going off the screen. If you've got a 100% loan to value, there are two ways to create 80% loan to value. What are one of the ways I can make my 100% loan to value an 80% loan to value? If you bring a down payment? I could pay some of the loan down, yes. I could literally walk in and say, hey, I went to the card room last night and I won a bunch of money. Here's 20 grand down so I could lower my loan amount and now I have an 80% loan to value. What's another way to create that spread? Couldn't you invest 20,000 and just build the equity in the house? Yes, that's what I'm saying. You could walk in and pay your 20 grand right here and lower your loan amount. That creates a spread of 80-20. Here's your 80%. But what I'm saying is there's a second way to create that. What would it be? If the first way was to jack with the loan, what do you think the second is to do? How? Pay off your PMI? Is it, yeah, could you adjust it? Well, you can adjust it because that's the whole point. Let me make, let's go back. When the loan and the value are equal, the bank wants you to get PMI. If they're an 80% loan to value, I told you, that's the definition of conventional, there is no PMI. 
So what I'm asking you, how do I take 100% loan to value and make it 80% loan to value? And we have already discussed one of the ways is to lower my loan amount by going in and paying $20,000. Now I've created 80% loan to value. There is a second way to take this, and that would be to do what? Can't you just uh, add $20,000 to your house and then build the equity? Yes, Cameron. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm lowering the loan. Yeah, there you go. But what's the other way? Is it changing it to a conventional loan? Well, uh, okay. We're lost somewhere in here. Um, that yeah. is the definition of conventional, is this spread. Okay, let me give it up. Obviously, where I'm missing the boat here. I can raise the value of the house, right? I can take the loan and pay it off, or I could leave the loan the same and raise the value. Either way, there's a 20% here. So if I had a $100,000 house, I could walk in and pay 20 grand off, like Cameron said, now I owe 80. What is that spread? 80%. Or I could leave my loan at 100 and have it reappraised at 125,000. Now I've got a loan of 100 and a value of 125. That too, is an 80% loan to value. So you can have your home reappraised after the bank has already appraised it in order sure. to give you the original loan? Yeah, what's that called? It's called refinance. refinance, right? Refinancing, okay. And when you refinance it, you would get it reappraised. So now the new, the same house you've been living in, now it's worth 125, but you want to say, oh, I got to pay off that $100,000 loan, so I need a $100,000 loan, but it's worth 125. That's an 80% loan to value. It's now, not when I get this 80%, either here or here, guess what happens to PMI? It goes away. Because now, by definition, I now have a conventional loan. The ratio of the loan to value is 80%. And it doesn't matter if it's a million dollar home with an $800,000 loan, that's still an 80%. So I can lower my loan amount or raise my value to gain. 80% loan to value, and then PMI goes away. So that's what I was trying to get at. So the PMI is something that you pay monthly until you until you get back to that 80%. Right. Once you gain 20 to 22% of equity, your PMI will then go away. Now, the other common way 